now it's up to Ryan Raper. 2-1. Rayburn swings, drives a deep left field. It is gone to Summit City, and the Indians win it. Ryan Rayburn, a three-run game-winning homer, and the Tribe prevails by a final score of 11-8. to An exciting night at the ball yard last night as the Indians won it in walk-off fashion. Their seventh walk-off win of the year. Third time they've done it with a three-run homer, and they'll look to continue the momentum tonight. Game two of their three-game series, the Indians and the Texas Rangers. Hi again, everyone. Matt Underwood alongside Rick Manning. Last night, lots of offensive fireworks. Tonight could be a different story. You've got two tremendous pitchers, both of them all-stars. Justin Masterson against Hugh Darvish. And both of them, the team's ace. And Hugh Darvish is the league's premier strikeout pitcher. This guy has outstanding stuff. A great curveball to go with a slider, a changeup, a fastball. He does not give up many hits. So when you do get base runners, you try and take advantage of it. The Indians beat him in his only start here last year, but it was a gift. He struck out 11 uh, left-handed batters from the Cleveland Indians. And 3-1 and one on the road this year, only making his second start since coming off the DL. He'll be matched up against Justin Masterson, the Indians all-star, and we'll see if Justin can go out there and do his thing. He's coming off a terrific start against the Minnesota Twins. He gave up one hit in his seven innings. He was outstanding. And so Justin looking for his first win against the uh, Texas Rangers. We'll see if he can keep the momentum going for the Cleveland Indians tonight. Rick, when Justin Masterson goes seven innings this year, he's 8-1 and one with an ERA of 1.30. He's done it 11 times, so if he gets deep, Usually that means good things for the Cleveland Indians. Driving the Texas Rangers, potentially a great pitcher's matchup tonight. Masterson and Darvish as the Indians try to make it three in a row overall and two straight over the Texas Rangers. The play-by-play is next. City. Oh, what a stop by Cabrera. Strike three called. Got him. 
Oh, another one. On the move. Runs it down on the warning track. It is gone! The Savannah City and the Indians win it! Lots of fireworks last night and a big win for the Tribe as they upended Texas after the Rangers roared back from a 7-1 deficit to force extra innings. But the Indians go home the winner. They start the day. Three games back of Detroit in the AL Central. Texas, four back of Oakland in the AL West. Indians have won back-to-back games. Rangers have dropped two straight. And Justin Masterson will tow the rubber for the Tribe here this evening. Raining most of the day here in downtown Cleveland, but it is beautiful here at game time. A little bit outside, ball one. 72 degrees, our game time temperature under cloudy skies with that sun bursting through. Ian Kinsler takes a strike to even the count. Kinsler had a big night for Texas in their comeback effort. He had four runs batted in. Yeah, he tied the game up with an 0-2 base hit to right field last night in the eighth. Masterson now gets ahead on the count, one and two. And a slider low and away. This is the first start against Texas for Justin this year. In his career, 0-4 against the Rangers. But he's coming off a beautiful start in Minnesota. Foul third base side. He went seven innings and uh, gave up just the one hit, the one run. And, you know, he never really had that slider about the third inning where he started to pick it up. So we'll see if it takes him any time to get it tonight. Hopefully not. Hopefully he's got it from the outset. The 2-2. Swung out and missed. He struck him out. Following Ian Kinsler and Ron Washington's starting lineup tonight, Angel Beltre followed by Nelson Cruz, who homered last night. Adrian Beltre bats cleanup. A.J. Przinski fifth. He'll D.H. Elvis Andrews sixth. And Mitch Moreland, Giovanni Soto, who will catch. And Leonis Martin batting ninth. Here's Justin this year, his 22nd start. 11 and 7, 360 earned run average, 145 strikeouts. He, Justin's done a good job there. His counterpart is leading the league in strikeouts, Yu Darvish. Masterson's 145 strikeouts, good for fourth best in the AL. In addition to Darvish, he also trails Felix Hernandez and Max Scherzer. Chris Sale right behind Masterson, then Justin Verlander. So quite a few Central Division pitchers among the strikeout leaders in the American League. Our Firestone Extra Mile auto leaders. Right back up the middle. He shot it through Masterson. Yeah, almost sounded like it hit him. And Beltre is aboard with a one-out single. And now we'll get a look at those Firestone Auto Care Extra Mile Index. There's that little low sinker. Well, I don't know if it got a piece of him and it went straight down or not. One on one out for Nelson Cruz. Pitch inside for ball one. This is going to be, it should be, a tough at bat for the right-handers against Masterson today where they're hitting just 178 against him on the year. And both these pitchers very good when they get two strikes on a hitter. Very low averages for the opponents. Boy, all of a sudden it's 3-0 and now to Nelson Cruz with Adrian Beltre waiting on deck. And Masterson finds the mark. Three balls and a strike. (laughs) 
And Justin comes back with a couple of strikes now to run the count full. And Cruz, he didn't even offer. He was taken all the way. So he's going to make him throw three in a row. And a lot of times if you're right-handed and you get that 3-1 count, you're looking for a fastball. But, of course, Masterson's moved so much. Runner goes, 3-2 pitch, chopped slowly towards third. And Chisenhall will throw out Nelson Cruz, two down. Beltre in a scoring position. Let's check out the Kia Indians defense behind Masterson this evening. Brantley in left, Bourne center, Stubbs in right. Chisenhall back at third, Cabrera at second, or at short, Kipnis at second, Swisher at first, and Santana behind the plate. Mark Wagner behind the plate, Marvin Hudson, Jordan Baker, crew chief Tim McClellan. Adrian Beltre went three for five last night. Pitch outside for ball one. Adrian Beltre, he has been in some kind of groove. In his last 19 games, he has homered eight times, but he hasn't struck out, and that covers 83 at-bats. Now, you'd think with a power hitter, you would swing and miss a few times, but he's in a, a, a great groove. It's a career best for him. Pitch up high. Well, you you think you look at it. Adrian Beltre has struck out 42 times in 407 at bats. Elvis Andrus who's not a power hitter. In fact, he doesn't have a home run this year. In 397 bats, at bats, he has struck out 20 more times. Amazing, isn't it? Than Adrian Beltre. Now for Justin, it's three straight 2-0 counts. I don't know what it is early. A.J. Pruszynski waiting on deck. 20th pitch of the inning for Masterson. Bullseye, and it's three and one. Trying to find some rhythm here at the outset. Three one pitch. Swung on and missed a full count. This is a fastball inside. Now, this is what I thought maybe Cruz would do, but he gets after it. Because of that movement, it runs in, possibly off the plate. You see that pitch on our Nissan pitch tracker. That was a good pitch. Now the payoff. Foul out of play. Ron Washington liked the way his club battled back and gave themselves a chance last night, but he said, we just didn't have the last say-so. The Indians did, and they won it in the bottom of the 11th. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Masterson with a couple of Ks in the first, and the Rangers strand a runner in scoring position. The Indians are coming to bat.
No score, bottom of the first. Let's take a look at Terry Francona's starting lineup. It's brought to you by Progressive, making it easy to bundle your home and car insurance. Michael Bourne leading it off. Nick Swisher bats second. Then Jason Kipnis, followed by as Dribble Cabrera in the cleanup spot, three for six with a double last night. Michael Brantley also had three hits last night, batting fifth. Then Carlos Santana, followed by Jason Giambi, Lonnie Chisenhall, and Drew Stubbs. Hugh Darvish on the mound for the Rangers tonight with a record of 9-4. and This will be his 20th start this year, and his second since coming off the DL. He had a right trap strain. So he is back. He is pitching 125 and two-thirds innings, 161 strikeouts. That leads the league. He gives up very few hits. You can see 86. So you've got to take advantage of every base runner you have on. This guy can go through some punch outs. Yeah, it says something about him that he's missed two starts. and He still leads the league in strikeouts. And six times he's been in double digits. And what was it, three times he had 14 yeah, this year? Yeah, three different times, including opening night where he almost threw a perfect, perfect game. Right. I mean, this guy is, he's the real deal, and he's got uh, a, a lot of stuff, a good curveball to go with his fastball. And look at out of the stretch right from the get-go. Bourne drives one deep down the right field line. Gone! Michael Bourne leaves the yard in the first inning. A leadoff homer that just did clear the wall. Down the right field line, and the Indians strike first. Lead it one to nothing. It's Bourne's fourth home run on the year. He just hit a first career grand slam in Seattle a couple of days ago. Well, he's on an RBI tear. That's eight in the last three games. And, I mean, he jumps all over this pitch, and why not? It's a fastball in. Darvish in the first inning, an ERA of over five, 521. That ball gets right up and hits that fan in the hands. It falls over. He's upset, but the Indians aren't. It's a home run. They take a one nothing lead. Well, and the Indians have struck early and often at an incredible pace this year. The Tribe has outscored the opposition now uh, by 23 runs in the first inning. The Rangers, conversely, have been outscored by 24 runs in the first inning. The Indians are among the best in baseball. Rangers among the worst. Nick Swisher takes a strike. It's their 17th home run in the first inning, too. Well, and and like I said, it's always nice to play from in front. But when you've got a club like the Rangers do, and like the Indians, it's not like getting down a couple of runs early is... You know, the end of the day. You've no, got plenty but you of always to like back. to play from in front. I don't care where you're at, especially at home. I think it just makes it a little bit easier. Well, Michael Bourne has given the tribe a one nothing lead. Nick Swisher down the count 0-2. And, and he strikes out. Ball's in the dirt. Giovanni Soto picks it up, throws him out. One down. Let's check out the defense uh, for the Rangers. They made three errors in last night's game. Beltre is in left, Martin in center, Cruz in right. Beltre is at third, Andrus at short, Kinsler at second, Morlin at first, Soto doing the catching tonight. Well, the Indians have now homered in seven straight, and they've scored in the first inning in five in a row. Oh, boy, I like that. And for uh, Michael Bourne, that's the second time this year he's given the Indians a one nothing lead. Do you remember it was against the White Sox and Jake Peavy? Mm-hmm. Remember that first hitter? Boom, home run. They had it, but that was all they that was did. That's all they right. got. Yeah. Right. Seventh time in Michael Bourne's career that he's hit a leadoff home run. Now Jason Kipnis, a swing and a miss. It's 0-2. You, Darvish. With Kipnis down on the count, 0-2. And And look at that breaking ball. Big dip. But Kipnis able to lay off, 2 I got a chicken or the egg question for you. As a hitter, 
Does his breaking ball make his fastball that much better, or is it the fastball at 96 miles an hour that makes the breaking ball that much more difficult? It's always the fastball because you're not going to sit going and look for the breaking ball on the first pitch. It doesn't matter. His fastball is going to set everything else up. You know, and they don't have a track record against him. He's only faced him one time. You know, so it's going to take them a while to get around. And if he makes his pitches, you watch. He'll use his fastball. You, you can't sit on the breaking ball because he'll throw the fastball right by, and that's where you make your money. Back-to-back -back strikeouts here in the first after the homer by Bourne. Now is Dribble Cabrera. That almost looks like a cut fastball. Yeah. Or, that had a little movement to it. It looked like it ran in on Cabrera to me. And that was at 92. He's throwing his four-seamer at 95, so that could have been a cutter. This guy can throw just about anything at you. And nothing is straight if he doesn't want it to be. That fastball has popped up. The shortstop, Elvis Andrus, is back now called off by Beltre, and Angel Beltre puts it away to end the inning. But Michael Bourne with a leadoff homer has the tribe in front, one to nothing. by McDonald's now introducing three exciting new quarter pounders and by Kia great shot at downtown Cleveland from earlier today when it, it did look a lot like London here in Cleveland lots of rain and just low clouds but uh, boy it is broken up and it's just ideal here at game time A.J. Pierzynski. You know, how many times do we say that right point? Boy, if we'd have had a day game today, we'd have played. and wouldn't have had any problem today. If it would have yeah. been a day game, we'd still be sitting here just getting ready to start the game anyway. Pierzynski on one pitch grounds out. One down here in the second. Our stat of the game brought to you by your Northern Ohio Buick dealers. Elvis Andrews has now hit in 35 straight games against the Indians, equaling the streak that Ken Griffey Jr. had that ended back in 1996 at 35 games. So he's trying to make a little history here tonight. Andrews was one for four last night. Scored a couple of runs. It's funny because before he got his hit that extended that streak, he should have had a hit. On a ball that was scorched up the middle, but Corey Kluber made a terrific stop. Had a double play, but inadvertently threw the ball away. And it wound up being an error. But then he got a chance later in the game and came up with another base hit. It's pretty, 
unusual that he would have so much success you at know, the start I, of his career. And that's what I was going to say. You know, I don't think I've ever seen this guy where he's not swinging the bat well. You know, I, I look at his numbers over the course of the year, and here's what you were talking about last night. He snags it but threw it away. You know, we've seen Andrus, and there it is. He's always hot against the Tribe. That gives him 36 straight games with a hit against the Indians. And at least going back to 1916, which as far as the research goes back, he's number one now. And he's had good numbers. Oh, that's right down the middle. I mean, and you take advantage of it. Someone's making good pitches on this guy. That one wasn't. He shoots it the other way, and the streak continues. Second hit for the Rangers, both one-out singles. Mitch Moreland coming to the plate. Moreland with 14 homers, 40 runs driven in. Pitch outside, ball one. One oh pitch runner goes. Broken bat bouncer to second. Kipnis will take the out at first. Two away. Andrews in the scoring position. With a runner at second base and two down. Giovanni Soto coming up. We'll get a look at our keys to the game. No extra outs for the Rangers. Try to tighten up that defense. And Justin Masterson trying to make himself right at home. Yeah, six and two at home. Yeah, two ninety one ERA. Right now he's two of eight first pitch strikes. Slowly chopped to third. It stays fair, and Chisinau throws out Soto to end the inning. Indians one, Rangers nothing, middle of the second. On top, one to nothing. Bottom of the second for the tribe. Michael Brantley, Carlos Santana, and Jason Giambi do up. The Michael Brantley jersey was the big giveaway today. And I tell you what, when I got to the ballpark, they were lined up around the block, wait, getting yeah. you know getting here early. They wanted to make sure they 
came home with the, the giveaway tonight. Well, Michael has a lot of fans here, and rightfully so. Having a good year, and you're right. They were lined up to get it to make sure. And fireworks to follow the ball game tonight as well. And a first pitch strike in there. You Darvish throwing a lot of strikes. 10 out of 12 pitches for strikes already. Including the one that landed just above the fence in right field for the homer by Bourne. One ball, one strike. And now Darvish gets ahead one and two. I think Indians fans probably appreciate the consistent level of play that Brantley brings day in and day out. Well, he, he's he never changes. He just uh, set on one course and he goes out. He, he's the same every day, and that's something you want in an everyday ball player. You know, people say, "God, maybe he can do a little more." Or they maybe they want some more home runs, but you can't change a guy. I mean, it'll come with time. He can he can hit him. He has seven. Yeah, he'll hit him occasionally, but you it's know, not who he is. It doesn't define no. him. He stays on the baseball. That's why he hits lefty so well. He hits righties. He uses the whole field. He's just a consistent guy that you can count on every day. And he's developed into a really good left fielder. He well, had an assist a... last night and should have had two because Santana dropped a ball at home plate. I don't think you know either of us had any doubts that he would play a solid left field, but it was coming into the season, hey, you got three center fielders. Who's going to go where? How does this work out? Well, he's taken the left field like he's played there his whole life. Well, yeah, and he's a good left fielder. I mean, if you put him between left and center, he's a better left fielder than he is center, in my opinion. Darvish with his third strikeout, one down here in the second. I mean, he, he, he's just, he goes to second base. This stopped a rally for, te uh, for Texas. He tried to, uh, Beltre tried to stretch it in, Angel Beltre. And, I mean, he made a strike, and then after that, there was a hit and a walk, and they continued to keep that inning going. So that was really a big play. Would have had another one yep. in the game. At home plate, they wouldn't have scored, except Santana took the uh, shoulder in the glove and dropped the ball. But the throw was right on the money. One-hop throw yep. right there. So Brantley's really done a nice job in left. Carlos Santana with a bit of a shift on here by Texas. The shortstop, Andrews, just on to the second base side. He's not completely pulled around like some of the exotic shifts that we see, but certainly they're loaded up for Santana. You know, sometimes when you're an infielder and you're like that, watch Darvish how he falls off to the mound. Sometimes he can get in his way. He's pretty straight. He drives right through to home plate. He doesn't fall off the mound like some pitchers do. Obviously, that's why he's standing there, but it's, it's awfully close. You can get blocked out as an infielder, yeah. and you don't see what's happening. And outfielder, too, sometimes. Yeah. You have to play a step or two somewhere else, depending on how the pitcher falls off the mound. Right back, out of play. Well, you're right. Darvish is about a straight line he of goes, pitcher, as you'll see. That's why his control is so good. He's driving directly to his target. I think if you check his mechanics, he's from the stretch. Everything is so fluid and smooth. And I think that's why he is so consistent. Really don't. I mean, other than watching him on TV, you don't get a chance to watch him in person. It's only the second time, and both his starts have come right here in this ballpark. Up high with it, three and one. So Santana's worked himself into a good count here. Chopper foul, full count. I think back, you know, the guy who comes to mind for me, at least uh, among Indians pitchers, is Jake Westbrook. 
Release the ball, square to home plate, which is why he was such a good fielding pitcher. Most of the guys who are good, like Greg Maddox, who won, what, 14 or however many gold gloves, they don't fall off to one side or the other, which is why they make so many plays in the middle of the diamond. Struck him out, and that's four for Darvish here in the second inning now, two down. So Michael Bourne homered off you, Darvish. Other than that, the Indians haven't had much success against him so far. Katie with him, what's the game plan? Well, Matt, all of the players in the Indians clubhouse today kind of told me the same thing. You, Darvish, is the type of pitcher who can really take advantage of big swings because he has so many pitches. The key, pick a side of the plate, stick with it. Don't do too much when you're up there. And when you get a pitch to hit, make sure it's a strike and not one of his chase pitches. That's why he's so tough when he gets to two strikes. Guys are hitting 106 when he gets you to two strikes. So you may think you're going to get, you, you don't let him get to that point. The 1 0 pitch. Here's a 2-0 pitch. In there for a strike. Now the 2-1. Fouled right back. You know, Rick, it's not like every... Japanese pitcher who's come over to the United States has been sensational. Some of them have been very good. Some have not. I mean, I think a Hideki Arabu was pretty much a bust. Yeah. But a lot of buildup. Right. This guy has been maybe better than advertised coming in. And still, he's only 26 years old. Swung on and missed. Well, he's rolling right now. He is mowing them down. Five Ks through two, but it's the Indians with a one nothing lead. All right, we go to the top of the third with the Indians on top, one to nothing. For the Texas Rangers, Leonis Martin will lead it off. Then the top of the order.
Martin, three for three last night and scored a couple of runs. Yeah, he had a really good night. Pretty good slider right there. Now that's been a difference-making pitch for Masterson When he this stays year. on top of it, it's unhittable for lefties and righties. Wow, that was scorched into the crowd, and I mean nobody had a chance to get out of the way. Two balls and two strikes. Masterson's pitch is pop foul. Now Masterson into the line and the 2-2. And that got a piece of the umpire on the ricochet. The young fan who took the brunt of that foul ball was walking up the aisle and another fan came up and handed him a baseball. Martin strikes out. Third strikeout for Masterson. One down here in the inning, and we'll go back down and check in with Katie. Well, Matt, Indians pitching coach Mickey Calloway told me that this was a good matchup game for Justin Masterson when it comes to his slider-sinker combination, specifically going against guys like Kinsler, Cruz, and Beltre, who have trouble at times hitting pitches down and away. But the interesting fact, Matt, Justin Masterson is third in baseball in terms of strikeouts on his slider. The number one guy, you Darvish. The number two guy, Derek Holland. Another Texas They're Ranger. All in this ballpark. Yeah. Well, the slider, yes. And that's why these guys are so good against right-handers. And that's why these two pitchers do not give up many hits when they get to two strikes. So if you're a hitter, and believe me, if you're a right-handed hitter, you don't let them get to two strikes. You get up there and you do whatever you can to try and put it in play prior to that. You know, now if they go out and paint and they, they get ahead of you by making quality pitches, you're done. You don't have a chance. Trying to get Kinsler to chase at it again when he's down on the count 0-2. There's no pitch in baseball, I don't believe, that has a more love-hate relationship than the slider. Last night, Jason Fraser hung a slider, and Ryan Rayburn hit it out of the ballpark to win the game. It's one of those pitches when it's executed well, it's dynamite, it can be electrifying, can make hitters look bad. When you spin it and it hangs, well, it goes a long way. It's like any pitch you throw. You throw a fastball down and away, they're not going to hit it. You make a mistake middle of the plate, they crush it. It's all about location for pitchers. Yeah, but it? you hear more about hanging sliders being hit for home runs it's than any other pitch. Because it's an easier pitch to make a mistake on. But more fastballs are thrown. I mean, when you throw sliders, how many, what percent of your pitchers are, are sliders? Maybe 20, 25 maybe? Well, it depends on the pitcher, but. Well, true. No 1 0. Grounded towards second base. Jason Kipnis feels it cleanly, throws him out. Masterson sets him down 1 2 3 for the first time tonight. We'll go to the bottom of the third. Cleveland 1, Texas nothing.
Just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one to stay tuned later in the game for Miller Time. Brought to you by Miller Lite. Lonnie Chisenhall will lead it off for the tribe. He'll be followed by Drew Stubbs, then the top of the order. Chisenhall hitting 240 overall this year. But in his last 26 games, since he got called back from the minor leagues, he's batted a very respectable 270. Fouled back out of play. In those 26 games, Chisenhall with three homers, 14 runs batted in. The 1-1. One, one. Upstairs with a fastball, and it's three and one. Well, this is what you want as a hitter. Now you zero in on a fastball, and if you get it, don't miss it. High heater up out of the strike zone. Full count. Lonnie knows he chased ball four. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, you're looking for the fastball, and this is what happens as a hitter. You get it, and you get a little aggressive. But it is ball four, and Lonnie's a good low ball hitter. But, hey, you know what? You're looking for that pitch. He gave it a shot, and you followed off. No big deal. At least you got after it. Now the 3-2. Shot that one into the Texas dugout. Almost picked off the pitching coach, Mike Maddox, who sits up front there. Yeah, you better be quick. And, you know, Washington was a good infielder, so I'm sure if he had a glove, he might not have seen it. He might have been blocked out. Hope he, hopefully he still has good lateral movement. Well, like we all do. <laughs> We're a little step short now. Again, the 3-2, and it's fouled back. Comes back with back-to-back -back sliders to Chisholm Hall. So Lonnie about to see his eighth pitch from Darvish. And a fastball fouled back. Darvish who can rush it up there at 96. And then he can throw that slider in there at around 84, 85 miles an hour. And the payoff pitch up high with a slider. Cut under that one. First walk of the night, and the Indians have their leadoff man aboard. Our trivia question tonight brought to you by AT&T. Four pitchers have no hit the Indians here in Cleveland. Who are they? There's the pitch, and Drew Stubbs a swing and a miss. Oh, one pitch is swung on and missed. This is the only right hander in the lineup. For Terry Frank corner tonight from the right side and right handers haven't fared well 140. So Drew you drew the short straw today. But. See what you can do down 0 2. Lob toss back.
strike three called. The 96 mile an hour express locked him up and that's a half dozen strikeouts now for Darvish. Our AT&T U-verse rewind. Michael Bourne earlier this year with a leadoff home run against Jake Peavy. Tonight he did it again. Second time on the year, seventh time in his career. And he starts the game with a solo jack. That's the only run of the contest so far. It's been an RBI machine, huh? He had four on Sunday with the grand slam. Three yesterday. Or excuse me, Wednesday. Three yesterday and one today. But Darvish striking out six of the first yeah. nine batters he has faced. So you got to say he's on his game. I think that Michael Bourne was a wake-up call for him. You wonder. You know, he threw a fastball in, the same as it was for Peavy that time. When that leadoff mm -hmm. man leaves the yard, boy, does it bring you right back into focus. And a strike call. Well, we mentioned the fact that when he faced the Indians last year here in Cleveland, the Indians won the game. But he struck out a then career best 11. This year he has struck out 14 three different times. Yeah. Six times he's had double digit strikeouts on the season. Two balls and two strikes. Tell you what, he fell behind and he throws two pitches. Fastball down, fastball away, right? I mean, they can't be any better. Two two delivery and a little bit low. So a full count now for Bourne. And the 3 2, Bourne got a piece of it. He stays alive. Runner goes, 3 2 pitch. Ball four. Two walks in the inning by Darvish. Good at bat by Michael Bourne. Able to lay off one of those pitches that's up out of the strike zone, but it's tempting, so tempting for the hitter. That it is, but I'll tell you what, that's a, that's a teaser pitch and the discipline right there. I mean, you want to, and he, he wanted to go after, but he was able to hold up. So that's a really good at bat to just move in a runner into scoring position now. And every base runner is important off this guy. Nick Swisher will be the batter, struck out his first time up. And a fastball strike to get ahead. Swung out and missed. Change the pace, and boy, Nick way out in front. Down and 0 and 2. Well, and I would. Venture gets it. He's going to see this pitch again. That's a breaking ball straight down. Great bite to that pitch. Two strike pitch. Up high with the heater.
And you might see another one of those breaking balls down yeah. in the dirt. Change the eye level. Well, and be ready when you're on base if he bounces it. He's thrown five wild pitches this year. Instead, Stay another up. high fastball. Two and two. Lonnie Chisenhall is at second base. Michael Bourne at first. Darvish ready with the 2-2. Two -two. And again he misses upstairs. Full count. Well he's thrown a lot of balls in this inning. That's his fourth full count. And look at it, he is in 24 and only has 24 pitches in this inning and has one out. There's the set by Darvish and the payoff pitch is swung on and missed good breaking ball. And that's seven strikeouts now for the Texas right hander. First one came on that breaking ball it almost looked like a curve ball and uh, you'll see another breaking ball. We said the slider he leads the league in striking out hitters with the slider. But he's moved his fastball around. He has good stuff folks. I mean to tell you. He's walked to he struck out two in this inning. See if Kipnis can do something to get a two out runner home and add to a one nothing lead. Fastball hit on the ground to first. Moreland scoops it up takes it himself. The inning is over. No runs no hits two men left after three it's the Indians one of the Rangers nothing. Indians with a one nothing lead now as we head to the fourth inning here at Progressive Field on a night that has turned out to be just perfect. Nelson Cruz Adrian Beltre A.J. Pierzynski do up for Texas. Justin Masterson has given up just two singles so far tonight one in the first one in the second. This is going to we figured it's going to be a little different ball game than last night with all the offense they had the Indians with 18 hits the Rangers with 14 19 runs scored in the game. You got a couple all stars going at it tonight. Breaking ball missed inside. To Nelson Cruz who grounded out to third his first time up. Chopper foul.
Grounded towards short. And it's Drupal Cabrera. Flips it over, one away. Tonight's injury report brought to you by Elk and Elk. Serious lawyers for serious injuries. Call 1 800 Elk Ohio. Great news. Josh Tomlin, for the first time since last August, got on the bump and pitched in the game. In the Arizona League for the uh, for the tribe, went an inning and struck out a batter, gave up one hit. So for Boy, Josh, that's just uh, one of those you know, milestone steps on the comeback road. I hope we get a chance to see him again this year before it's over with. I'm I'm sure we will in September. I certainly hope so. I used to love to watch him pitch, man. He gets on the mound, he doesn't mess around, throws strikes, adds, subtracts, and let's go. Wouldn't bet against him, that's for sure. Absolutely. And the other thing people just you don't realize because we didn't know we don't we're not privy to all of the information with good reason he pitched hurt for a long time because that's just the kind of guy he is he didn't want to have surgery or go on the deal because he wanted to keep trying to help in the team so he wasn't a hundred percent for a lot of the times we saw him pitch but he he had the guts and the fortitude to still go out there and try to get it done. Well, and he had to go through what so many other pitchers in baseball go through. Tommy John surgery. Yeah, and have a it long, done. long, it's a year tedious and a half. process. It's a year and a half. No matter how you, you slice it. Some may come back a little bit sooner. But you look at about 18 months when you get back to it. 3-1 pitch just missing for ball four. That's the first walk issued by Masterson. Well, swing for the fences with the new Home Run Derby mobile game from MLB.com. It's available on iPhone and iPad, and you can download it free today. Here is A.J. Pierzynski serving as the D.H. tonight. Pierzynski grounded to second his first time up. Ken Rosenthal, who writes for FoxSports.com, has suggested that there is more to it than just rumor that the Rangers are interested in bringing back Michael Young, who is with the Phillies, adding him to their ball club. Pierzynski sends one high in the air, shallow right, foul ground, and Kipnis, the second baseman, gets there to make the grab for out number two. It's one of those deals where it just goes to show you that you know, teams want to add pieces. The Rangers have been rumored to be in on Alex Rios and a number of other players. But with each hour and each day that ticks off the clock, you maybe start to get a little more desperate. Well, we can't get that guy. What about this guy? And, you know, you never know who's well, going to be willing to deal, too. But Michael Young, he spent his whole career as a mm-hmm. Texas Ranger up until he was gone over to Philly this year. And I mean, they know him. They know. I, I'm sure they'd love to have his personality back in the clubhouse. Well, and here's the interesting thing: Young kind of is in the driver's seat on this whole deal because he has a full no-trade clause in his contract. So if he wants to come wow, back to Texas, that's... he can say, "Okay, I'll waive my no-trade clause for them," and that will well, certainly anything help can happen. Grease the skids right down oh. off the shin or maybe near the yeah, ankle. Yeah, the inner, inner part of the shin or the ankle is right. That two-seamer that runs in. How many times do you think we see this in a game Masterson pitches? Guys going, rolling on the ground and barking because they fall one off their foot, their leg, their shin, their knee. Elvis Andrews who singled his first time up to extend his personal hitting streak against the Indians to 36 games. That's the best of anybody going back as far as 1916, which is as far back as they can dig up through the records consistently. This is it. Yeah, that is amazing. The other two guys had a little power in their bats. And they had you know. they had some games under their belt before that began. Right. This started with the first game he ever played right. against the Indians. It's been one of those uh, stories that, uh, you know, it's hard to believe for whatever reason. Andrews 
after fouling that ball off of his leg is ready to go or as ready as he can be. Two down in the inning and the runner at first. Almost did it again. <laughs> I was say, that was awfully close. You know, you look at it and what Andrus has done to the Indians, 36 game hitting streak at the start of his career. You may want to burn those scouting reports and start new. Go with something different. You know, maybe you can stop them. The 0-2. A little bit outside. Yeah, well, that, that hit he had off Masterson the first time was a fastball right down the middle. But with the approach that he uses, stays on the ball. They don't chase the sliders as much as guys that have bigger swings. But he did that time. He sure did. And that gives Masterson four strikeouts tonight. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth. The Indians won and the Rangers nothing. Right now on FoxSportsOhio.com, all the latest news from Browns HQ in Berea. The Aaron Rodgers, Ryan Braun saga. <laughs> and follow along on Indians Game Connect. Get complete coverage of all today's action involving Ohio sports on FoxSportsOhio.com. As Dribble Cabrera fly to left his first time up. Though it was more of just a pop-up that was just beyond the reach of the shortstop, Elvis Andrews. The Indians haven't really hit a ball hard. Well, let's put it this way. They've only hit three balls tonight. One of them left the yard. <laughs> one of them was a pop-up. The other one was a ground ball at first. There you have it. And they're still leading one nothing. Oh. He took something off. Look, 72 miles an hour. Big slow hook, man. That's a, I mean, that takes you off the, it starts above your head, and it just comes down into the strike zone. Slider, that curveball. He's got everything. Fastball away. A.J. Pierzynski's not catching tonight. Soto's behind the dish with Pierzynski DHing, but I got a quote here from Pierzynski who says that, not that it's a problem, but he said when Darvish is pitching, he's got so many different pitches and variations of the same pitch that he said it can be tough to get on the same page with him. Yeah, I, I can imagine if you're not out there or you don't know him every time you go out there, it probably would take a little while to. Because we've talked about it before with pitchers. If you could throw at two different speeds, mm -hmm. you know, with certain pitches. See, he just threw that 172. I mean, you can. It, it makes it like it's two different pitches. And certain hitters that I don't know how many hitters would be dialed into this guy the way he pitches. There's the second hit. 
And a line drive base hit by his Drupal Cabrera. The Indians had their leadoff man aboard for the second inning in a row now. He got a fastball. After he showed him that slow hook, he took advantage of a fastball inside and lined it to uh, right field. Good job. He didn't miss it, put it in play, got a base hit. So three out of the four innings, they've had their leadoff man on. Tell you one thing, I'm looking at Tommy Bow just handed me the numbers. It doesn't really matter for Darvish who's behind the plate because this is the tenth time that Soto has caught him. Pierzynski's also caught him ten times. Numbers are about the same. ERA's a little bit higher with Soto. 256 ERA with Pierzynski behind the plate. 320 with Soto, but relatively the, the well, same it's safe results. To say that this guy, no matter who he pitches against, is going to be tough. Michael Brantley had a pretty good at bat his first time up, but it wound up with a swinging strikeout. But he worked the count, looked at some pitches. Because you, as you pointed out, this you could see that it's amazing to me he doesn't have a complete game because you could see a lineup saying, hey, boys, Let's get after him early. Yeah. Don't get behind on the count. And you could see maybe putting a lot of balls in play and him just breezing through a start. But obviously it doesn't happen that way. Maybe because even if you get your pitch, you can't put it in play early yeah, in the count. it is hard. You know, he, he has 45 walks on the year. 168 strikeouts. You know, it's tough to say. You've got to feel comfortable as a hitter. But what you have to do is stick to your approach. Whatever it may be going up there against him. You know, you can say, okay, I know him when I go deep in the count or he, he's ahead of me, I'm going to see that slider. You may say, go ahead and look for it. But, man, that's hard to do because he's throwing 95. And he has variations of it. He can sink his fastball. He can cut it. And he can throw the four-seamer. So there's three different uh, fastballs right there. He's got the slider, the curveball, the slow curveball. I haven't even seen a changeup yet. Two two. Out of play. Well, it's still a long way to go in this game. But it is interesting to note that Justin Masterson. He's already won two one to nothing games this year, and he won one last year. So he's won his last three one to nothing games that he's pitched in. Line drive caught. Throw back to first, not in time. Look how quick uh, Andrus got rid of that ball. And that's the second time. You remember Brantley last night hit one right on the nose at the first baseman. Here's our great clip of the game from last night. Ryan Raber, and they had the bunt sign on, then they took the bunt off. Rayburn said it was still in the back of my mind to bunt. But once they took it off, I said, you know what? Let's see what we can do. I like what he did. Three run homer. Terry Francona said, look, the way they were moving their infield around, they were being very aggressive. And I just thought, oh, what the heck? Let's see if he can just do something by swinging the bat rather than trying to bunt. Yeah, I like it because Brantley was the on deck kidder last night. And they would have walked him if he does get the bunt down. So he caught a hanging breaking ball and ended the game. Jason Frazier said, I didn't know if he was going to bunt or not, but I threw a slider and it was right down the middle. Well, in baseball's a game, it, it's hindsight. You look back, you know, if he didn't hit a home run and made an out, some people would have been all over him about Why aren't bunting. you bunting? Yeah, right. right. And right. they wanted to put him on, but. You know, sometimes there's gut feelings involved, and those guys that make that decision a lot of times in the dugout, they're right on. They know what they're talking about. Now, whether the guy gets it, pulls it off or not, it, you know, it, it just, uh, over the course of the long haul, you got to go with your gut. Good block by Soto. And there's no one way to do it. 
You know, this is a team, they don't sacrifice a lot. They don't give up outs. And I, and, I, and as much as Rayburn's been playing, I don't think you, you give it up. Because he, he hit the at-bat before he hit a bullet to left field that was caught. So Terry had a good feeling. He took it off. And even Rayburn said, you know, it's in his mind to get the job done. He knows what he has to do. So he said, you know, I was thinking. So that means he wasn't thinking home run. He was just thinking of getting the guy over. Yep. Santana taking a strike, and now he's down on the count of one and two. Well, as you see on your screen there, this is about to be the 70th pitch delivered by you, Darvish. So while they don't have a lot to show for it, they've made him throw some pitches. They've made him work. They've had him out of the stretch last couple of innings. Yeah, he's a guy that he'll throw this 105 to 110 pitches per game. And it's a fourth inning. They have him to 70. But he does have seven strikeouts. He has two walks, and that's probably why it's up there. They haven't been able to put him in play early. He hasn't had a lot of easy outs. Justin Masterson. They've been able to foul off eight strikes, too, with eight two-out strikes. Justin drawn a yawn. He's had some time to cool off in the dugout. Outside with it, two and two. Santana drew a couple of walks last night in the series opener, and that's certainly been part of his repertoire all season long. Second only to Miguel Cabrera in the American League and drawing walks. Cabrera takes off on the 2-2 pitch, and it doesn't matter. It's strike three called. But Santana, or excuse me, but Cabrera is able to get in there with his sixth stolen base of the year. Eighth strikeout for you, Darvish. Last year on July 26th, the Indians had a big party here at Progressive Field. They beat Justin Verlander, and the Indians were hot. And then they completely fell apart. Fast forward to one year later. Ryan Rayburn with a walk-off game winner. What will the Isn't remainder of this year bring? Well, hopefully it's going to bring a lot of better results than what happened after the 26th of last year. Jason Giambi looks at a ball up high. His dribble got a terrific jump to pick up that sixth stolen base of the year. Cabrera takes off for third, and he'll have that stolen standing up. But with two down. Yeah, they're not uh, looking at him. I mean, Andrus was right back there. Darvish wasn't paying attention. You know, right now they're, they're worried about the out. But he walks in to third base. 2-1 count. See if Jami can get something and get a big two-out base hit. And a strike is called. Two and two. Two two delivery. Swung on and missed. Ninth strikeout for you, Darvish. Indian strand a man at third. And after four, it's still Cleveland one, Texas nothing.
brought to you by the wireless receiver only from AT&T U-verse Rethink Possible. And by your local Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. On a gorgeous evening here at the ball yard tonight, a great pitcher's matchup. It's what we expected, it's what we anticipated, and it's exactly what we've seen so far here tonight. Justin Masterson, Hugh Darvish, a pair of all-stars, and they have brought their all-star game here tonight. The only blemish for you, Darvish, the leadoff home run by Michael Bourne. He has whiffed nine. Masterson has been more efficient, and he has struck out four. And he's given up just two singles. He's got the bottom third of the Texas order here. Mitch Moreland, Giovanni Soto, Leonis Martin. Mitch Moreland bounced to second, his first and only time up. I think this is what we expected, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's hopefully it continues this way and it stays this way. Fouled off. No balls, two strikes. Two strike pitch. A little bit outside. Oakland won earlier today, so the Rangers are now four and a half back of the A's in the AL West. Slowly chopped to third. Chisenhall. Loads in a hurry. Close play. They got him by a whisker. Monty Chisenhall didn't have time to dawdle. He got it right near the cut of the grass. Fired it over. Then Swisher with a good stretch to retire Moreland. Well, you knew it was going to be close, but you know the base runners. You know how they can get down the line. And Justin sent that away. Nicely done. Up comes Giovanni Soto. You know, when you're in a game like this defensively, your awareness goes up. You're ready for everything, and it's fun. It's fun to play in these type of games when you have two guys locked in because you know one run could mean the difference. Broken bat, base hit to left field for Soto. And the Rangers have a one-out base runner now here in the fifth. Well, we've seen a lot of very good pitching tonight. Masterson with the sinker down and in the Darvish slider. How about before the game? Joe Askew, he can still throw a strike. Nice strike, The Joe. immortal Joe Askew. And then there's Chris Rose. Oh, he's going to take. What yeah. was that? He's going to get abused. Even the, even the Texas guys are all over him. He, Nick Swisher Ohio still had some love added, for him. Yeah, well, <laughs> Ohio went out and saved him. He, like Chris, uh, yanked that slider across. No, he tried to throw it too hard. You know, like everybody does, you know, you want to throw it and make it look. No, you put some air underneath it and let it float in. Don't be too proud about it. <laughs> we always say that speed doesn't have that whole lot to do with it. Pride goeth before the fall. <laughs> Michael Brantley grabs it for out number two here in the fifth. Let's come back to the Hyundai Studios right now for an in-game update with Al Pulaski. Well, Matt, Rick, not a good start tonight for Philadelphia or Raul Valdez in Detroit. The Tigers scored five runs in the first, including this 32nd home run of the season for Miguel Cabrera. 5 nothing. Tigers lead the Phillies. And, oh, by the way, Max Scherzer is on the hill tonight for Detroit. Matt. Yeah, that's that kind of year for Scherzer, isn't it? I mean, you get the run support. The, you pitch well. What's yeah. he looking for? His 15th tonight to I go 15-1? and one. 14 and 14-1, right? Yeah. He gets uh, the best run support in the league. Go it's an, figure. It's an embarrassment of riches, isn't it? Well, I mean, that's what happens when you have a year like he's having. Yeah. Everything goes your way. Mm -hmm. he, you know, he'll be the first to tell you, hey, he goes out there and he's going to pitch like it's a nothing-nothing ball game. He's having a very special year. There's another one. Kinsler shot that off of his own foot.
And that one just missed inside. Got him. That hit him. Yes, it did. It was a slider. He got underneath. And, you know, Kinsler's one of those guys, he's not going to move. He sort of took it, and I think it was a little bit off the jersey. Don't know if it got much of the shoulder, but it's a slider uh, that Justin cut underneath. And he just took it in the arm and gets on base. Justin's done that a number of times this year. Angel Beltre to the plate now, one for two with a single back in the first inning. Down low for ball one. It was Beltre who lined one right back through the legs, I think, of Justin Masterman, or right past his leg. It was right back up the middle in yeah. that first inning. It looked like he, he got a piece of it. Looked like it went through him, didn't it? Yeah. Evens the count of one and one. Take a look back from the first inning. Either that or just caught the mound. You know, right yeah. there off the dirt on that upslope that shot that ball in the air. That's a line drive base hit in the right field. Coming around third is Soto. He'll be held there. Yeah. Stubbs got to it quickly. That's a break because you got the catcher on second base. The ball was hit right on the nose by Beltre. And Stubbs was playing right. So he gets to it quickly, able to get it in. They can't try and score the runner. There's another one I think he cut under, a little slider. And he smokes it to right field. And even though there's two outs, you're off and running. It's just catcher on second base, so remember that. So the, they batter, have, the batter will be Nelson Cruz yeah. with the bases loaded. They have the bases loaded is right. So out goes Mickey Calloway. Well, you know, it's interesting. We were just talking a few moments ago about Max Scherzer of Detroit, about how he gets the best run support in the American League. And here tonight you got Justin Masterson against you Darvish. Masterson knows what that's all about when you don't get run support. Yes, He's been he through that before. Darvish this year, in eight of his last ten starts, they've scored three runs or less. Yeah. In eight of his last ten. Well, that's why he started out, was it eight and one? And he's three and seven since that point. Yeah, he's still pitched well. Right. I mean, you look at those scores. He lost one to nothing, three, uh, four to three, three to one, six to two. Yeah, you, you four have to, three. to score. You have to score and you have to pitch well. If that starting pitcher is going to get a lot of wins. Well, a little bit outside. All of a sudden, it's 2-0 and oh now for Cruz. And all of a sudden, it seems like he's lost a little bit of feel for the slider. He made a mistake with one. He hit Kinsler with one, cutting underneath it. And that's your rely to pitch. Rip the third yeah. foul down the line. That's a that that was the fastball. He had a 2-0 count, and Cruz was sitting on it. He got out in front. It's gonna miss by a couple of feet. He didn't even have to look at it. He knew. No, that was well foul. But a 2-1 count for Cruz. There's right down Broadway and locked him up with that slider. But he got on top of it, and it had some tilt to it. More straight down than he, side right. to he side. He didn't get underneath it. He got on top of it there. Now this crowd getting into it here. one nothing Indians. Bases loaded for Texas. 2-2 pitch. Grounded to short. Cabrera to Kipnis. Ends the inning. The Rangers leave him loaded. Masterson pitches out of trouble. We'll go to the bottom of the fifth. It remains 1-0 Cleveland.
Well, Justin able to get out of it. Mickey Calloway talking with Santana and Masterson. Let's look at the sequence to Cruz. He misses with that fastball. It was a pretty good pitch, though. Slider away. 2-0 count. He hits a bullet. Just foul. Then he comes in with a slider. He locks him up. And then he had another slider. Cruz tried to pull it. They get the force out at second base. Masterson out of the inning with the lead of one to nothing. Lonnie Chisinau to lead off the bottom of the fifth. And it's ball one from Darvish. Outside corner, a called strike. Breaking ball, fouled back. One and two, the count. Get on the ground to third. Adrian Beltre scoops it up. Had him played perfectly in the hole. One down. Well, Wednesday night, the Chicago White Sox will be in town. There will be fireworks, dollar dogs, and the first 10,000 fans through the gates will receive a cap, Indians cap, and then the fireworks, which is presented by shares, are part of the fan ticket exchange opportunity after the rain delay, May 31st game. So log on to Indians.com for your tickets. Down in the dirt. Drew Stubbs out on strikes his first time up. Pop foul back out of play. They'll one one. Foul back out of play. I mentioned earlier, Rick, a couple of reports out there involving national baseball writers saying the Rangers are considering bringing back Michael Young from Philadelphia in a trade. But T.R. Sullivan, who's covered the Rangers for a long time, long time writer, he says a major league source has told him, quote, that trade is not going to happen for Michael Young. So Okay. Well, a guy I'm sure that has an inside track and knows a lot more than other people if he's been with the Rangers for a long time. Got him looking. Drew Stubbs rung up outside corner. That's 10 strikeouts for Darvish. Obviously Stubbs didn't like the call there. Our in-game recap. Don't blink. This is it. It started early. Lead off home run by Michael Bourne in the bottom of the first. The only run of the game. Second time this year Bourne has let off a game with a homer. Seventh time in his career. That's been it. Already seven times this year, Darvish has punched out 10 or more in a game. 15 times in his career now. Well, he's, he's born taking a called strike. Yeah, he has been good. And, you know, in those starts where he's had 10 or more strikeouts, they're three and one. Now, usually, you're punching that out that many. You're pitching well. So normally that does bode well for your club. But the Rangers, like so many times when Darvish has pitched this year, are struggling to score runs. Now, a lot of times they're probably match up against another team's good starter. Maybe their number one or their number two guy. You know, isn't it funny? You can go out there and toss a beautiful game like he's tossing, and one pitch could cost you a ball game, believe it or not. It could be in the first inning. 
you know, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but we're in the fifth inning, and that's the way it, it's shaping up. You wouldn't have thought so after what we witnessed last night, that's for sure. It was last man standing. Born, well, of course, homered in the first and then walked in the third. This game is still going to be decided by the bullpens. Three balls and a strike. Uh, the Indians have uh, done a nice job of laying off that slider a number of times tonight. Out of play, full count. Now the payoff pitch. No tap or foul. You know, you look at Darvish and his numbers. 17 of his 19 starts so far this year, he's gone at least six innings. So that's what you call your ace, your guy. Masterson's done pretty much the same thing here with the Indians. They go out there, they give you some length, they try and save your bullpen. You know they're going to be out there. If you can score for these guys, they're going to be a pretty good bet to win. The 3-2. Up high, he's walked them again. Second time Bourne gets the free pass, and he's on with two outs here in the fifth inning. Nick Swisher coming up. As Dribble Cabrera stole a couple of bases off Darvish back in the fourth inning. We'll see with two outs if Bourne not? tries to get in scoring position here. If Cabrera can steal it, Bourne can. I mean, you have two outs. You're better off getting in scoring position to maybe if you get a little flare hit you yep. know to, to score him draws a throw A pie ball one. Born holds and Swisher fouls it out of play in the count one and one. The American League Eastern Division leaders, the Tampa Bay Rays, continue to get good pitching. They beat the Yankees one to nothing. Today. Archer was the guy. Beat Nova. They only gave up a couple of hits. How about that? Well, that kid pitched here, and, and he's a former Indian. New and York, it. meanwhile, falls to eight games off the pace. They're 54 and 50 now on the year. One and one to count for Nick Swisher with Bourne taking his lead at first. He holds. It's outside two and one. Take a look at those Eastern Division standings. Boston just a game back. Baltimore right there as well. And that's why for this Texas club, like the Indians, it's probably win the division or bust. Though a long way to go between now and the end of the season. Good nice pitch in there for a ball. strike. That was a beauty. You know, I think the pitch before he tried to do the same thing, but rushed his delivery a little. And then you see it right on the outside edge. Good pitch. 60 out of the 96 pitches thrown by Darvish have been strikes tonight. The 2-2. Two -two. 
Chop to first. It skips foul. Oh, it was very close. Moreland wasn't going to make the play. You know what happened? Did it hit the bag? No, it hit the corner of the grass. And it shot it past the bag foul. That's what happened. That's why it was foul. It might have been fair if it didn't do that. I think it hit the edge of the grass. Check it out. See it? Yeah, Just sure cut did. And it, boom, it, it veered off to the right. That would have been a fair ball. I don't know if Moreland would have had it. It would have been awfully close. I think he might have had it if it was fair. Because he it looked like he had it covered. Yeah, right on the edge of the grass. And that is, that's what steered it into foul ground. So, again, the count is two and two with two down here in the fifth inning. And Swisher takes aim with Michael Bourne at first base. Surprised we haven't seen Bourne take off yet in this at bat. Well, it's you know, 2 2 now. You might as well wait. Strikes him out to end the inning. That's 11 strikeouts for Darvish. And after five, it's still 1 0 Cleveland. Tonight on Training Camp Daily, Jim Donovan, Andre Knott, Mary Kay Cabot. Break down the Cleveland Browns secondary. Jim will go one on one with TJ Ward, get complete coverage of all today's action from Berea tonight at 11 30 on Training Camp Daily. Justin Masterson will go up against Adrian Beltre, AJ Pierzynski, and Elvis Andrews. Here in the sixth. And you see Justin Masterson has only punched out four, but he's been very efficient with his pitch count. He's only at 80. Love that. You know, the ground ball is his, his pitch anyway. His counterpart, Hugh Darvish, at 98. When he keeps his walks down and he has the ground ball, he's usually very successful. A little bit high, ball one. Line to third, right at Chisenhall, one away. Now, Justin Masterson, I mentioned he's been efficient. Had a couple of strikeouts in the first inning. Three ground ball outs in the second. Two more ground ball outs in the third. Another in the fourth. Had some trouble in the fifth with the bases loaded, but he got the ground ball to end the inning. And here's the thing with Justin Masterson. This is something that I mentioned 
earlier tonight when we first came on the air. He's had 11 starts this year where he's pitched seven innings or more. When he does, he's 8-1, and one, and his ERA is 1.30. So when he's able to pitch well and pitch deep, that usually means good things for the Indians. It's not that it wouldn't mean good things for a lot of starting pitchers, but in particular for Masterson, when he's able to get deep, that usually means he's not giving up much at all. Swung on and missed. One and two the count on Pierzynski. Now, in the ten starts he's had where he hasn't been able to get seven innings under his belt, he's three and six, and that ERA jumps to over six. Well, both these starters are doing their job. You keep your team in the ball game. One nothing. You can't ask for anything any better. Six hits in the game. Rangers have four. The Indians with two. One just happened to leave the ballpark. That one's just in off the plate. Pretty good looking pitch, though. 2 yeah, 2. It's a good pitch. Fouled right back. The 2-2. Swung on and missed his fifth strikeout of the night. Two down here in the sixth inning. That was just pure heat. And it was away. And watch it move. Down and away. That thing just keeps running. And there you go. Try and do something with that. Tough to center on it. Elvis Andrews, one for two. He singled back in the second inning, struck out his last time up. Low and away. Two balls and a strike. Boy, he got the sign, and he was kicking and dealing. That, you love to see a pitcher in a good rhythm, and that's where Masterson is at here tonight. Two and two, the count on Andrews, who has stepped out of the box now to try to slow the big right-hander down. But you can see Justin, he's ready to go. Yeah, you feel it, man. He wants to stay right there. So you can see he's just trying to well, stall. Well, that's okay. That's what you try to do when a guy gets in a rhythm like that. You don't let him. You got to make him think about it. You got to back him off. You got to slow him down as a hitter. Oh, got and missed. It didn't matter. You can't slow the big guy down tonight. Six strikeouts for Masterson. The Rangers go one, two, three.
Been a beautiful night here at the ballpark. As you get a look in at Progressive Field from our Panini Cam, brought to you by Panini's Bar and Grill. Jason Kipnis, 0 for 2 on the night. Big curveball. That was at 67 miles an hour. But just missing. One and one the count at Darvish, 63% strikes on the night. Kipnis sends one high in the air. Deep right field. Cruz back on the track. Jumps up in front of the wall and makes the catch. He must have lost track of where he was at. And that is out number one. It was just a tick off the sweet spot of the bat for Jason Kipnis. All right, who are the four pitchers with the no-nos against the Tribe here in Cleveland? I remember Irvin Santana. Dave Steeb. Right. Matt Young lost a no-hitter against the Indians in Cleveland. But, of course, that doesn't count anymore as a no-hitter because he only pitched eight like innings. Dino, Dean Chance. Yep. Allie Reynolds back in 1951. We'll have to be talking to a guy tomorrow who pitched a, a no-hitter for the Indians. Sonny Siebert in town for the weekend. He and Joe ask you, and Joe was the catcher, so they will be in to talk with us tomorrow. Look forward to that. Yeah. Part of the great pitching staff back in the 60s, mid to late 60s for the Indians. I was at the game when Matt Young threw the no-hitter against the Indians, but the Tribe won the game. Wasn't it a doubleheader? I think it was a doubleheader because Roger Clemens, if I remember right, pitched, pitched a nightcap, and the Indians got two hits in two games and split. Yeah, exactly. They got an error, and I forget That's how they right. scored the run, but they beat they beat the Red Sox in the first game even though they didn't have a hit. But years later, MLB changed – Sort of changed the wording of the record, so that's not a f recognized as a no hitter because he didn't pitch the ninth inning because the Indians were ahead. Okay. So it's technically not. So you were at that game as a fan? I was actually working. But yeah. Okay, I was, was going to say, you didn't pay for it. Covering ticket. the game. Okay. You were at Channel 5? Mm hmm. <laughs> Heck of a way to spend an afternoon. See two games, see two hits. <laughs> But one win. Got How does that the happen? Office. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like we do now. <laughs> and you know that, that the thing you remember about that is talking to Matt Young and interviewing him, and he he just looked puzzled. You know, it was like well, I just pitched a no hitter <laughs> and lost. Yeah. Well, if you saw his control, <laughs> you, you would know why. Back in the day, he had good stuff. Two down as Michael Brantley is coming up. Well, the Tigers are coming back to town after we go on a brief uh, road trip. That'll be Thursday, August 8th, and uh, it'll be Dollar Dog Night. It'll be a 7.05 game. Get your tickets early. Go to Indians.com. Want to wish Tony Armano belated happy birthday. 82 years old in Fairview Park. Watches every game. I'm told sometimes he even gets up and watches the replay the next day. Not a boy. We were out Tom. on the West Coast, so missed his, uh, the original date of the birthday when we were in Seattle. But hope he, hopefully you're having a good week, Tony. All right, Tony. He's, what, 82? Yeah. And I've got one, Lance Zink, who's 28. Let's flip, flip it, it around. There you go. Just Two eight or Lance, <laughs> happy birthday, my friend. Brantley struck out his first time up. Hit a line drive to Andrews at short his last time up. And he's in the hole 0 and 2 here. As you Darvish looks for his 12th strikeout of the ballgame. 
This will be his 110th pitch of the night. Just his second start since coming off the DL after that trap issue that he had. Trapezius muscle. Yeah, it's easy. I call it the trap. It's easier to say. <laughs> well, I mean, he came off the DL in his first time out against the Yankees. Six and a third, two hits, no runs. Yeah. No, this guy is fun to watch pitch. He he knows what he's doing. He can move it around. He pounds the strike zone and he can punch you out. You better be on top of your game. The Indians have two hits. Mind you, the first one left the yard. Michael Michael Bourne. And that's where we stand. Jason Kipnis just missed hitting one out of here to start this inning. And of course Cabrera had to Line drive single to right field in the fourth, but he was stranded ultimately at third base in that inning. Three walks haven't amounted to anything. Darvish the one two. Brantley drills one to right field. That's a base hit. That'll go to the fence and Brantley's on his way to second base. Michael pulls into second with a two out double. Well, all right, on Michael Brantley jersey giveaway, he comes through. Two strikes, two outs, gets a base knock. And I got to tell you, Brantley's a good breaking ball hitter. He's also a good two-strike hitter. That breaking ball stayed up, but he had two strikes on him. So he stayed back, drives it to right field. Michael comes up with his 15th double. That'll give uh, Santana now an opportunity to add to a one nothing lead. Carlos struck out swinging in the second, looking in the fourth. Darvish ready, checks the runner at second. And Santana takes a breaking ball for a strike. Neil Cotts up and throwing in the Texas bullpen. The 0 1. Santana looks at that same breaking ball, but it was inside, off the dish. 1 and 1 to count. There's the left-hander who we saw for many years in uh, Chicago working for the White Sox. 1-1 one, one pitch. Low. Two balls and a strike. And Santana takes inside again. Three and one. Santana, who's done a decent job all season long with runners in scoring position, of batting an even 300. 3 1 pitch. Ball four. It's inside. Fourth walk issued by Darvish, and here comes Mike Maddox, the pitching coach. You know, I, he didn't want to give anything here to Santana in that at bat. Well, Maddox is going back. Yeah, and, he was all. Well, is that maybe the manager going to take him out? Maybe he was a little premature. I don't know. Well, he didn't. He didn't make it to the the line. He didn't cross the line. He just got about five steps out of the dugout, and then he put the brakes on. Maybe Washington called him back because he wants to. Make the move here. We'll see. No, okay, then he got it straight. They got their communication set. And it didn't look like he really wanted to. He wasn't going to throw Santana fastball. He went at him and attacked with all break a ball to see if Santana would swing anything once he fell behind. Didn't do it. Now comes the pitching coach, and Maddox wants to talk to him. You've got Giambi. He's been able to strike Giambi out twice tonight. He had Santana twice also. But with that uh, man in scoring position. But once he fell behind Santana, he probably figured, I'm not going to give in to him. If he chased it, great. If not, I'm going to wait. Right. 
go after the next guy. But, you know, what, that's true. And, and Santana has a lot more at-bats, and that's probably where you go through in your meetings. All right, we don't want to let this guy drive it in, make Giambi beat you. But Giambi's had some big hits this year to drive in some key runs. And how much does Darvish have left in the tank? He, right. You can see that Maddox was asking him, and he said, "No, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I feel good." So he's staying in there, closing in on 120 pitches. He's gone as many as 130, 27. I, oh yeah, 130. That's the max. Yeah, I was looking at that. He's gone 130, 127. Yep. Brantley takes off. He swipes third without a throw. It's the second time tonight. The Indians have stolen third with two down, as Drupal Cabrera did it earlier. All that does is, if you get a if you get a wild pitch, a chance to score from third, obviously. Shift on, you see the second baseman Kinsler out on the grass, shallow right field. Giambi drives one deep down the right field line, but he hooks it foul. Yeah, he was looking for that little slider in there. He saw it enough tonight. He got after it, but just pulled it foul. Boy, he left that one out over the plate. He was just a hair too quick with it. Put a good swing on it. And how many times do you think he's hit a foul ball like that in his career? <laughs> Too many to count. You know what I mean? Huh? He knows. He knows exactly what happened. He just got a little out in front. Santana takes off for second base. No throw. Second steal of the year for Santana. Well, they're giving him the bases, so why not take him? You know, you yeah. get a base hit, now you yeah. get two. Cabrera stole two earlier, so that's four bags for the Indians tonight. They got 77. 2-1 two, pitch. Yeah, mm. good one. Really good. Two and two evens the count. Started that off the plate and let it come back around. Not what he was looking for. He was looking for something more down and in. And now let's see if he changes the eye level and goes with the high fastball above the belt. Jason Giambi, 435 career homers, 1,428 career runs batted in. There you go. They're trying to get on the same page themselves between Darvish and Soto. See, with a 2-2, two -two, I wouldn't. We'll see if he elevates the fastball first and then comes back with a. Yep. Out well, of play. So you asked earlier, how many times you suppose Giambi's hit one down the line foul like that where he's uh -huh. had to wait and see? I figure if he's hit 435 home runs, probably close to 1,000. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, that have been just. You go out there and get it. You know, and at Brantley at third base, with Beltre so far off the bag, he can be a distraction to Darvish here because you can come down the line as far as you want. Yes, indeed. I mean, with him, with Jambi, now they're playing him at shortstop. Nobody's at third base yeah. to attack. And that's so what Brantley's can, doing. Keep coming down because he's got to really pay attention to you. You just keep your eye out of the corner. Of... Giambi drives one deep center field. Martin back. On the track, pulls it down to end the inning. Good job. Boy, Giambi drove one to deep center. Martin ran it down. The Indians strand a pair. We'll go to the seventh. one nothing, Cleveland.
Panini's with 18 locations in Northeast Ohio and by Levin. What a beautiful night. One nothing Cleveland on top as we go to the seventh inning. It has been a spectacular pitchers duel here tonight. Michael Bourne let off the game with a home run for the tribe. Since then Darvish has been dominant Masterson has been unyielding. It has been sensational to watch both these guys go about their business. I'm glad they preceded this game with a 11-8 extra inning game last night where fans got to see the offense. You could sit back and enjoy home runs, singles, doubles. Tonight, it's been all great pitching by two all-stars, and, well, it's been a good ball game as well. Still a ways to go going into the seventh. Over 60% strikes thrown by Masterson tonight. He has fan six. And a first pitch strike to Mitch Moreland, who is 0 for 2, grounding out twice. Yeah, this Texas club, uh, you know, what a difference a year makes. This year they're averaging 4.2 runs per game compared to just a titch under five last year. You know, with the loss of Hamilton, Napoli, Young combined, they had 75 homers and 251 RBIs missing from that lineup. That's a lot of juice. So you're counting on younger players, and it takes time. But you also understand, you know, there are economics involved. I mean, sure. Josh Hamilton, what he signed for was astounding. Napoli, that can't pay him to play first base when they have a first base when they need him as a catcher. Yes, I understand it. Part of baseball. But what the Rangers have done is they've sort of quietly under the radar transitioned from, we'll beat the daylights out of you softball team to right. pitching heavy, play good defense. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of their MO now. They, it's not like they don't have any offense. They still have a very yeah, good they lineup. They still swing it. You're right. Swung out and missed. Masterson with his seventh strike out of the night. Well, he struck out the last three guys he has faced. As promised earlier, it's Miller time, brought to you by Miller Lite. All right, let's super slow-mo the slider of Masterson. Yeah, that's what you're looking at from behind. That's not even up in the batter's box as a hitter. That just gives you a little bit of an idea. You see that ball, and it just keeps going away, away, away. And you have to be conscious of that sinker that he throws inside, especially if you're right-handed. He's free and easy right now. Oh, and two the count quickly on Soto. Straighten him up. That's the whole thing about pitching. We've, we've heard it so many times. You have to pitch to both sides of the plate. You've got to work down. You've got to work up. Well, with his sinker, that was great, and he can win with just his sinker at times. Sometimes. But adding the slider and, and to, to pitch as effectively with it as he has been able to. Makes him dominant. Takes him to a completely different yeah, level. Yes, it does. Because those hitters, they, they can't sit on both. Look at that. He swung. Yes, he did, says first base umpire Marvin Hudson. And that's eight Ks for Masterson. Eight four Ks. in yeah. a row. Eight Ks in his last four, so he's starting to dial it in. You know, hopefully he doesn't think the end is near because if he can get out of this inning, you know, facing Martin quickly, man, he's at 104. I, I would send him back out again for the eighth. No reason not to the well, way he's I dialed know. in. Let's see what happens here. Oh, Slowly stay chair. Slowly chopped the first. Go. Swisher's got it. He'll apply the tag. And we have reached the seventh inning stretch. Masterson absolutely locked in tonight. The Indians on top, one to nothing. And the seventh inning stretch brought to you by Spitzer Auto World. Life is hard. Buying a car shouldn't be.
Family out to the ballpark on Sundays. Each and every Sunday home game is uh, kids' fun day. Plenty of activities for the kids to do out at the ballpark. They get to run the bases after the ball game. Go to Indians.com for your tickets. Today's Cleveland Clinic call to the bullpen. Texas will call on the left-hander Neil Cotts to come on here. In the bottom of the seventh inning, his 29th appearance on the air, and he's having a terrific campaign, 4-1 and one, and an 0-91 Boy, ERA. Boy, I'll say, the left-hander is back, isn't he? 167 opponents batting average coming on to face. Uh, oh, instead of Chisholm, it's going to be Mike Avilas. So a pinch hitter here. And Avilas takes down low ball one. And a strike evens the count of one ball and one strike. Foul back. One ball, two strikes. Avilas chops one to second, and Ian Kinsler gobbles it up and throws him out. One away. Get ready for Fox Sports 1, America's new 24-hour sports network. Fox Sports 1 will be your home for live sports, news, highlights, and shows that only Fox can bring you. America's new sports network is Fox Sports 1, coming August 17th. Well, I know Stubbs is going to be glad that Darvish is out of there. That's, he was the only right-hander in the lineup. And coming into the night, right, he's hitting just 140 off him, and he, he got him twice looking. So that couldn't have been fun at bats. Now he's got an opportunity to face the lefty. That a boy. Bare hand grab and throw. Beltre. Oh. oh, they got him at first on a bang-bang play. Well, that's a gold glover right there, fielding his position about as good as you can do it. And the way Stubbs goes down the line, that was a great idea. It's just here. You see, he was playing back. It might have been just a hair too hard, but Beltre lived up to it. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. Bang, bang at first base. Great bunt. Great play. Boy, that's, that's, this is good baseball. Love watching it. Good players make good plays. And that's about as good as you're going to get with the speed of Stubbs running down the line. Stubbs talking it over with Jason Kipnis. As you said, it took a gold glove effort to take it away from him. Now Michael Bourne, and he looks at a strike. Yeah, nothing you can do as a hitter there. You did your job. That guy just... That's why he's a gold glover. Born with that leadoff homer in the first, the only run of this game. He's walked in each plate appearance since then. But Cots takes care of him and on just three pitches, and we'll go to the eighth. One nothing Cleveland.
champions and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians. Well, it remains one to nothing Cleveland as we go to the eighth inning. Mike Avilas, who pinch hit for Lonnie Chisinau, stays in the ball game at third. Dustin Masterson will start the inning. Just over 100 pitches on the night. Joe Smith warming in the bullpen, just in case. Ian Kinsler, 0 for 2, was hit by a pitch his last time up. And takes a strike over the outside corner here to even the count of one and one. That pitch that hit him just grazed him back in the fifth. But as you pointed out at the time, he he doesn't give an inch when he digs into no. that batter's box. He loves the ball on the inner part of the plate, too. And he sees that little spinner. He's just going to turn. And if it clips him, it does. One and two, the count. Nice. A little jam job <laughs> right back to the mound. One away. Gave him no breathing room whatsoever. I mean, uh, that's not giving him a break. Look at it. He just runs it in, and I mean, that was just barely above his fist. That's what you call jamming the hitter. When Masterson has gotten the two strikes on these Texas hitters today, they're 0 for 13. Bunt. Masterson's got it again. Flip the first two down. Angel Beltre, who I think it was last night we saw him with a terrific drag bunt. But this time, he didn't pull it enough towards first base, and Masterson off the mound quickly to get it. Not a bad idea, but, I mean, that's okay. He just didn't execute it, and Masterson able to get that one nice hop for an easy out. Well, right now, he's one out away, and this is a, a hitter you, you want to end the inning with instead of bring that guy on deck up. It was Martin, not Beltre, who had to drag bunt last night. I had to look back. With those two assists, that gives Masterson 20 assists on the year. And he's also had a lot of putouts, 17 putouts himself. Now the 1-1. One, one. Rounded up the middle and a base hit by Nelson Cruz. And it comes with two outs here in the eighth, and it brings up Adrian Beltre. Boy, and here comes Terry Francona. He's already made the move. 113 pitches into this ball game. Masterson will get the hook. Terry Francona will take the ball. Masterson will leave to a standing ovation from this big crowd here tonight. Rightfully so. When we come back.
eighth inning. Tying run at first, Nelson Cruz. Adrian Beltre will be the batter, and Joe Smith on for the 44th time this year. Four and one, a 3.32 ERA. Smith worked an inning last night. Yeah. And he gave up the two out, two run single to Ian Kinsler on an 0 2 pitch. Well, he knows that. And he wants to come right back in and he wants to do his job. He wants to get out of this. Give him that one sinker, but this is going to be one tough out. And he gets ahead of him, and that's important. Great game for Masterson. Came back coming off another game, his last start. So two good ones back to back. In too tight, one and one. There's a drive to deep left field. Brantley on the run, on the track, makes the catch. And the inning is over. Beltray gave it a ride. Brantley runs it down, and we will go to the bottom of the eighth. One zip, Cleveland. Justin Masterson, handshakes and hugs all around. After a terrific performance from him tonight, Santana, meanwhile, is having a snack. But, but he'll <laughs> give him a hug as well. Oh, hey, stay tuned for <laughs> Indians Live. It's brought to you by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care. We'll have the highlights, reaction, and a whole lot more straight ahead. Nick Swisher, 0 for 3. Three strikeouts on the night. And Neil Kotz, who went 1, 2, 3 in the seventh inning with a first pitch strike. Out of play to the right. Now the 0-2 from Neil Kotz is up and away. You see Soto pounding. He wants it in off the plate. Boy, and he got it. Jam rolls it to second. Kinsler able to throw him out. 
Our in-game box score brought to you by your Northern Ohio Hyundai dealers. And Michael Bourne accounting for all the offense with one swing of the bat to lead off the game. A home run. That's really been it. The Indians did threaten in the fourth to a degree as Drupal Cabrera had a leadoff single. He would wound up stealing second, stealing third, but that was with two outs. Couldn't get him home. And then in the sixth inning with two outs, Michael Brantley doubled. Then Carlos Santana walked. They would both steal a base. They would be at second and third, and Jason Giambi flew to deep center field to end the inning. Jason Kipnis fouls one back out of play. The 0 2 is strike three cold. The executive producer for Sports Time Ohio is Tom Farmer. Coordinating producer for Indians baseball is Steve Warren. Tonight's game produced by Jim Murphy, directed by Pat Murray. Indians Live is produced by Mike Bachman. Associate producers Mike Pachta and Steve Bardo. Technical director Dan Larson. Creative consultant Mark Koha. Two down here. In the eighth inning, Dribble Cabrera, the batter, one for three on the night. Pitch outside for ball one. One hopper to second, Kinsler fields it cleanly and throws him out. We'll go to the ninth. One, nothing, Cleveland. Stay tuned for Indians Live, brought to you by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care. Comes your way immediately following the game right here on Sports Time Ohio. Al and Jason will have the highlights. Katie will have interviews from the clubhouse. Rick and I will have some final thoughts. It's all coming up next. There will not be a lot of highlights, but there were an awful lot of good pitching going yes, on tonight. Indeed. Chris Perez coming on, who went two innings last night in the ball game. The ninth and the tenth did a terrific job. Had one strikeout his first inning. He only threw five pitches to get out of that ninth. He's coming on Przinsky, which he did face last night. It'll be Przinsky, Andrus, and Moreland, the scheduled hitters. Indians looking for another shutout. That would be their 13th. Well, the Indians pitching as a whole has gotten better of late. Their ERA in May was 440. In June, down to 4. 
15 in July to this point 376 starters have been very good. AJ Przinski leads off drives one to center field Michael Bourne makes the catch one pitch one out. Let's take a look at our McDonald's. I'm loving it. And you have to love the way Masterson went out there and attacked that Texas offense. He had a great slider. He got the ground ball working. He had his punch out working. He ended up having eight. Gave up just five hits in the ball game. And what a treat to watch. Elvis Andrews one for three on the night. And a fastball in there for strike one. Now Perez pitched two innings last night. But remember that first inning only made it five pitches. Right. And he came right back out. Quick second inning as well. Strike two call. Now most nights your closer works two innings. You're not going to bring him back. Probably that second night. Well, but it was because he was so efficient. We got to go back to what 2010, the last time he pitched two innings in a ball game. Yeah, equaling his career high. The 0-2 to Andrews, strike oh, three, call. Two Boy, down. You talk about wasting no time. Three straight pitches on the block. I mean, he painted this one right on the outside corner. Look where Santana sit. A little comeback. Oh, a good pitch. Man, that's a perfect fastball. Can't hit it. A little comeback to it. He gives up on it. Here's a guy that looks the other way to go the other way with two strikes. The well, Texas down to their last out. The batter will be Mitch Moreland, who is 0 for 3 on the night. And just missing for ball one. Tampa Bay shut out New York for their league leading 13th shutout earlier this afternoon. The Pirates lead the National League with 13 shutouts. There it is. And now Jason Kipnis throws the first, and the Indians have their 13th shutout of the season as they blank the Texas Rangers one to nothing. Chris Perez is 14th save. Justin Masterson, his 12th win. The Indians have now won three in a row. And they are 55 and 48 on the year. The Rangers have dropped three straight. They're 56 and 48. And Texas has now fallen five games in back of Oakland in the AL West. The Indians will stay three back of Detroit in the AL Central. And at last check, Detroit was burying Philadelphia tonight. What a job, though, Rick. The Indians 13 boy, shutouts oh tied with Tampa. For the league lead. You know, we, we thought it was going to be a game, a, a well-pitched game. And, boy, it, it was no disappointment whatsoever. Both those guys were outstanding tonight, and it was a treat to watch. And Justin Masterson is now 3-0 and in one to nothing games yeah. this year. Yep, spectacular. How about our key play of the game brought to you by KeyBank? Well, let's go to the top half of, or bottom half of the first inning, our leadoff hitter, and that's all it took. One mistake. It was a fastball in by you, Darvish, and Bourne hits it out of the ballpark to give him a lead. That held up the very first hit of the ball game. That is unbelievable. His second uh, leadoff home run on the year is seventh in his career. That's our key bank, key play of the game. And you get a free Kindle uh, Fire HD when you sign up for the new checking account. Some restrictions apply. Boy, another great night here at the ball yard is the Indians. Have this home stand off and running. Big crowd, a lot of fun. Fireworks coming up next. We've got Indians live straight ahead. But from some final thoughts before all that, right after this.